so in this session in this session i will uh, discuss about data migration process data migration process is similar for any module so depending upon whatever module we are talking about data migration process is actually very very similar only difference is target tables now when i say target tables that basically means if you are doing a sd migration then data goes to sd tables if you are doing a mm migration then data goes to mm tables if i am doing finance migration the data go to finance table so only difference is uh, uh, like what kind of tables the data going into it now data migration is important process uh, from the any project perspective because if you don't have a data at the time of go live then you have a problem now data is divided into three categories so category number 1 so category number 1 is organization data so in the organization data basically your company code or plant or sales org or purchase org etc so this is example of a um, organized data for them no migration needed and uh, we need to do config so normally these objects are subject to uh, config so when we talk about these objects so we are talking about uh, config so you are you're not migrating a normally company code you're not migrating a, um, you know any of this data normally in this case we have only configurations you will go and configure organization data you will configure company code you will configure the plant you configure sales so organization so there is no migration then we have a master data now in the master data there are many example so the most important example is a customer master vendor master material master and uh, gl master if you are in S, uh, sd then customer material info record in purchase you have a purchase info record source list etc okay so those are the and there are many others but these are some of the most common master data they are very important you cannot go live unless you have a customer unless you have a vendor unless you have material unless you have a gl master data unless you have a price list and another one which i have to maintain here which is very important is a price list so price list is also a very important master data because without price list you cannot upload the material so you have to have a price list data as well and there are many other but this is the most common and most important then another one is transaction data now transaction data is further divided into two category which is open transaction and the second one is open inventory balance uh, open balances so now in open transactions we have like open purchase orders like open sales orders open contracts etc so these are the different uh, because if you are going live if you have if you are an mm module 
and if many companies create many thousand POs on a daily and weekly basis, if you have open purchase orders, you cannot go live unless those open purchase orders migrated to SAP. Similarly, sales order, as decided, if you have a sales orders, you cannot go live unless you are loading your open sales order. So you have a contract. So if you have a, because many times what happens, the contract is long term. I have a contract for one year and two years. If I'm going live today, I still might have an open contract, which is valid for next year. So I have to make sure that all those contracts and purchase contract and sales contract and sales orders and purchase orders, all these different transactions are migrated from your current system to SAP system. The second one is open balances. In open balances, you have a inventory balances. And inventory balances could be on both IM and WM. And inventory balances is very important and sometimes is very complex also <coughs> because in uh, many companies depending upon which companies specifically in automotive industries and aerospace and many other industries they have thousands and thousands and thousands of finished goods and raw material and components and maintenance item repair item and operation item now for all of gazillion of different type of items if you have open balances if you're going live tomorrow then taking the date of cut, cut, uh, cut, uh, cut off date on that cut off date you have to upload all your master data in sap you have to have your open inventory balances you have to have open uh, inventory balance if you are using wm then you need open inventory balances twice one you need in im second time you need in wm and then you also have a uh, uh, you know gl balances Finance has a lot of balances. So for open uh, balance is very important, specifically for the finance people. So for them, you can have a GL balances, and then you can have um, AR balances. You can have um, AP balances. So these are the different balances you have. So inventory balances you can have in both IM and WM. GL balance you can have in a, you know, and then you can have AR balance. AR basically means account receivable. If you have a thousands and thousands of customer, you have to upload their opening balances. If you have a vendors, you have to AP basically means the vendors. And then um, the et cetera, there are others. Um, if you are using the like an SAP, you are using asset masters and you have asset balances and so many things. So the bottom line is loading all these data on a specific period is very important. Now, what are the common challenges? So common challenges is there are quite a few challenges. First and foremost, the challenge is data quality. Data is complete you know there is no missing info there is no duplicates there is no obsolete etc because if for example a customer is not you're not doing any business with the customer there is no point loading it if this material is already uh, you're you're not that material you're not selling then why to upload that material so you have to make sure that you're not duplicate is not coming obsolete is not coming complete data is coming missing data is coming another problem which comes is data transformation now data transformation basically means aligning the meaning of legacy data to sap data structure so that is another thing which is very important that you have to align the meaning of the legacy data to sap data structure so that is very very important now what is the meaning of that is so we have a data quality so for example let's say in SAP, you have a purchase org. You know, if you're trading a vendor master, there's account group. 
there's a company code, right? When you're uploading a lot of this data, you're uploading to a company code, you're uploading to a group, you're uploading to sales organization and distribution channel. Now, a lot of these kind of data is structured, doesn't exist in legacy. So you that become very challenging sometimes that how to identify which data will go to which plant, which data will go to which sales organization, which data will go to which company code, what is the my account group. So that is where you have to do a lot of data manipulation. Another is the overall data management. Because data management, because data include many people. So many teams are involved. In data migration, you have a functional team involved, you have a development or ABAP team is involved, you have a functional team involved. If your data team is different, then data team is involved, then legacy people team involved. So there are many, many stakeholders. So one of the challenge <laughs> in the data is that it involves many, many people. And because it is involved with the many, many people, Therefore, the management, the coordination, the planning, and your ability to work with the people is important. If you need a data, then business has to be available. Legacy people has to be available. SAP system has to be available. Functional consultant has to be available. Ever programmer has to do ever programming. So there are many people involved. Therefore, data migration become very, very challenging. And of course, data migration is very, very important because you cannot go live without data. Open system without data is of zero value. Another problem which comes is the timing. So timing basically means when you're loading the data into the production environment, you can only load in a short period of time. You cannot load, you don't have a three month or four month and all that. Many times data being loaded in number of days. Okay, you have four days and five days and seven days or whatever. So you have a cutover period, and during that cutover period, you're targeting. Then in the timing, you have also a sequencing and dependence. So first, you will have to have an organization data. That is the first thing has to be there in the system. After that, you have to have a master data in the system. Then after the master data, you have to have an open transaction. Then you can do inventory balances. And there's a sequence for that. You cannot create a master data unless you have organization data. You cannot create a, trans a transactional data unless you have a master data. So there is a dependence in all of them. So there is a periodic dependence in all those functions, which we can do. Okay. So this is an, a quick overview. Now, another thing which I want to talk in a from SAP perspective, like there is a there is a term called ETL. So this one slide describes the whole ETL process. E, e, e basically means extraction. T basically means transformation. And L basically means loading. We have extraction of the data. So data has to be extracted. Okay, oh, just a second. Let me reformat this. So I just make it more visible. So, when we talk about data migration, the so data migration have these three steps. Extraction of the data, transformation of the data, and the loading of the data. That is why it is called ETL. Now, when we're talking about extraction of the data, then you're extracting the data from the source system. To the source system. Now that source system could be whatever legacy system. There are gazillions and gazillions of source system, or we can we can also call uh, this as a source system, and we can also call it a legacy system. We can call it a source system, and we can also call the legacy system. And then 
ultimately data is coming from somewhere. So that is where you have a legacy system. And from where you are you're downloading the data. And then data is going to some middleware, some repository. These repository could be many things. This repository could be as simple as an Excel sheet, which basically means you're downloading the data from your legacy, your source system, that legacy system, that source system could be whatever. And from that legacy system, from that source system, data is being extracted and it has been stored in a middle repository. That middle repository could be whatever. That middle repository could be Excel sheet. That middle repository could be text file. That middle repository could be as important as Informatica. Some people use Informatica, say that Informatica could be. So in middle, because when you download the data from the legacy system, ultimately it has to be staged somewhere before it can be loaded into its target. So before it reaches the target, there is a middle stop. That middle stop is where we do transformation activity, conversion activity, cleaning activity. Now, what is the main thing of this? So when the data has been loaded and put into the clean, so if I want to see that what data is incomplete and what is missing information, what is the duplicate, and what uh, kind of information it is, all that will be go to the middleware. So that is where the transformation and the cleansing process will come into the picture. Transformation and cleansing process basically means identifying duplicate, identifying obsolete, identifying the dead data, identifying irrelevant data, identifying incomplete data. <coughs> if data is incomplete, you have to make sure the data is made complete. Because the data is structured, on the legacy side could be different and what we need in SAP could be different. So you have to make sure those fields which we need to put it is being entered. So that is we have a lot of these um, uh, functionalities uh, for the transformation. And once the data is made red, ready, then you have to make this data upload into the system. So for the upload, you can have a different upload programs. So there are different technologies which are available for upload. These are some of the most common technology which is used. IBDC, very commonly used. BDC is normally created by the other programmers. It's not normally done by the functional consultants. You can use IDOCs also to upload the data. IDOC is part of AAD, application link enabling. And Another tool which is used is LSMW, Legacy System Migration Workbench. You can execute LSMW using LSMW T code. So LSMW is a T code which can be ex run to execute LSMWs in the system. So there could be many, many different kind of upload programs which are possible in SAP. Now, one uh, thing which is very important for a functional consultant. So many times, what functional consultant do, it, it could be many things which a functional consultant can do. One of the activities functional consultant can be do is writing a functional specification document. So writing that functional specification document is one of the important activity for conversion. Now, in this functional specification document for conversion, I will show you some example. So this is a, one of the functional spec example for customer material info record. This is the customer info record or CIMIR is one of the objects in, a, in a, it's a simple example. 
is one of the example which we have in uh, SD module. So custom material info record is a cross reference between uh, material ID the way we call it and material ID the way my customer calls. This is a cross reference between the two. And then uh, obviously in functional specification, you can put the name and all that and that's a, just a template. Um, so functional specification template uh, could be anything, you know, that depends upon the project because every project have their own template. So they can write the way the template they want. Um, so the first section here is a business requirement where you can write down the business requirement, what is the customer need for record, this and that. Uh, what is the proposed solution? Yes, we wanted to convert the data, any assumption. Um, so that's basically a general terminology. So this is section for enhancement. So it is near, um, you know, bypass. We don't need this, not interface. We go back. This is a template of the function spec. So here, this is the section three, which is for customer conversion. So in the conversion, the legacy CMMR need to be converted and migrated to SAP 6.0. A load program will be developed to support this activity because if you're loading the data into SAP, you need to have a load program. Now that load program could be BDC program, could be LSMW, could be high whatever program it is. And then normally the choice of the program, what to be written, is done by the development team or technical team. Normally the functional team will not have a much of a control and saying to it that is controlled and determined and defined by the technical team. The T code for customer info record is VD51, VD52, VD53. These are the three T code which is being used to create or change display customer info record in the system and see it as Excel sheet for the field mapping. Now this field mapping document is the most important. Okay. Now let me open this map. This is the mapping document. This is the uh, and it's a very simple example. So this is an example of uh, a functional specification um, for this object. Now customer team for a card. Now we see here. So this is SAP side, and this is legacy side. We are two different sites. If you make it, let me make it a little color. So this is yellow color is SAP side. And then right hand side is legacy side that is blank. We don't know what is legacy. We don't know that. But here on SAP side, what we have. So first we have a table. So when you are going to this uh, record, customer material info record, it goes to this table, KNMT. KNMT is a table where customer material info record data is being stored. In that, this is one field, KUNNR, that is for custom master, data type character, length 10 character, correct, this is mandatory. You have to have, this is the mandatory field, comment. Data to be provided by the input file, Cross reference table will be developed for the new and the legacy customer number. This is example of a mapping because customer number for me is one, two, three. Customer number in Excel sheet or in legacy is X by Z. So somewhere SAP number and the legacy system number has to be recognized. So they will cross reference. Then now this is example of a transformation route here. If you see here, this is a KNMT, this is a table, uh, this is uh, my sales organization, this is my data type character, this correct this field is four character long, this is also mandatory field, and default to CA01. CA01 was this company's sales organization. So that basically means I'm telling the program that when you upload the data, default program will default this value equals to CA01. So the program reads. And pro it, it, this field is not in file, program defaults it. Distribution channel we needed. So this is the table, this is the field, this is a, a description distribution channel, this is a character, this is a two character length, and the, this is mandatory, and we have to define default to zero one or zero two. So we have to define two values because they have a two distribution channels. Now, then we have a, this is my material number, 
this is a character it in character long this is a mandatory and is the data to be provided by input files so in input file we will have a material number and that material number would be provided in the sap system then we will have something called a table in the table we can have a field number material number used by the customer so now that is another field we are providing the different values so this is an example of going through each field and then doing the mapping to the each field with the source table so this is one of the important activity for a functional consultant if your mapping document is not written then of course you have to write it if it is written then you have those programs you have to utilize to upload the data but before upload program bdc program or lsmws or idocs being created to upload this mapping document has to be there so this mapping document somebody would be created or you will create or someone else would have already created now this is an example of a uh, this is an example of the mapping i have opened another uh, document also now that is a i took an example of uh, this is a customer team for record uh, i have taken another example and uh, this example i have taken uh, for a open inventory balance so i've just taken two example one for master data one for uh, transaction data i have taken open inventory balances this is another function is spec if you see the template is different because they are two different projects so what kind of a template you are using doesn't make a difference this is another template so this is a business driver inventory balance in sap in the right bin the right bin has to be done in the im side load has to ensure that bins are ready for business transaction blah 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 because we have to make sure you know the data uh, your inventory information has been informed if you don't have inventory information then obviously you cannot use it there is also the data mapping document for it so this is example of a data mapping document and in the data mapping document we can have this is the data mapping document. now this is the data mapping document in the red color is the sap side and this is legacy side okay now again legacy side we don't need to worry because we don't know the legacy side legacy side information will always be provided by legacy person you are working as a sap consultant you need to know only the sap side of the table if you don't know sap side of the table there is a problem so one of the important responsibility for an sap data migration consultant is to be aware of the common tables table for customer master table for material master table for vendor master table for this master table for that master what is the table for sales order what is the table for purchase order what is the table for inventory balances so those table names we need to know now here an sap field we can have a table this is the table this is the field this is the description of the field this is what kind of a field it is field length and the logic now again the same thing so this is a transaction code lt01n this is the table this is the field warehouse number this is the character three character long and this information will be there lta ak table this is the name of the field we need a movement type movement type is a numeric is a three character and movement type would be default to 561 because when you are uploading the data into sap then your default movement type is 561 so program will take 561 and 561 will be uploaded into sap that is what sap will do okay and then uh, we have ltap this is the, another uh, table this is the material in this uh, table this is the material number 
this module description, this is a character, this is AT current clown, data provided by the file. So similarly, you have all these fields, and for each field, there are 13 fields, 14 fields, and each of the fields, you will be doing the mapping, and you will be defining the, the logic. So that is where the data logic comes into the picture. If you have any data conversion rule, that is, you can also define data cleansing rule and legacy system file. So all that information would be uploaded. So your ability to map is very, very important. And that is why people need to know table structure. Knowing the table, some of the common tables in SAP is also very, very important. So, table, knowing the table, so everyone, everyone, every consultant need to know some basic table. There are thousands of tables, but there are some basic table which everybody need to know. So, material master table, vendor master table, you know. Uh, customer master table, table for uh, you know sales order or purchase order, etc. Now, how to find table? How to find table? Now, the most I will show you some simple ways to know the table. So I log into SAP. So let's say I go to Material Master. So let's say I go to Material Master. And um, if I go to basic data, now this is the Material Master screen. And let us say I want to know what field it is and what table it is. The most, what simple thing to do is click F1. So on your computer, you have it F1. What you have to do, how to find table. So if you click F1 and then click on And then you can click on, you see that here, technical information. So if you click on this technical information icon, it will take you to the table, which is Mara and MKT. So what table it is? Mara. And what field it is? MKT. So we have find out. So click, so we have find out table is Mara and the field is MKT. Now, how to verify if this table is correct? So for that, you can go to transaction code SE11. So SE11 is a transaction code. And using SE11 T code, you can basically define. So I go to SE11. I go to the table Mahara. So So now I go to transaction code. I type SE11. So SE11 take us to the data dictionary. And if I type here Mara, and if I hit display, <coughs> so 
in this place. So that basically means so we are looking at the transparent table, Mara. So the table in which this data is stored is called Mara. And this is general material data table. And in this table, we have a 230 table. So now, when this information appears in front of me, transformation table, transparent table, then basically we know that Mara is a object. And this object is a transparent. So, unless some you get information, you don't know, right? And then in this table, you have all these different fields. So, if you want to see um, material type, it goes into this. Industry sector goes into this. Material group goes into this. Old material number goes into this. Base unit measure goes into this. So, <clears throat> when you're doing the mapping for each of the fields, you could you can go to SE11, and in SE11, you can check what field it is and uh, <coughs> which is what we see in functional spec that okay table mara this is the field this is character four character this is the field this is the character one character this is the field this is 18 character so we can define each of these fields <coughs> so that is how we can do sc 11 so that is another information now there's another transaction code which every consultant need to know. That is P code is called SE16N. <coughs> and basically the new transaction. There was SE16 also. So every consultant SE16N. Okay. So SE 16. N. Now, if I go to SE16N, there is another transition code. And if I put SE16N, this is another important transition code. Now, here, I can put any table. So, if I want to see the MARA, I can put MARA table. Now, what is the benefit of it? Here I can see the number of records. I want to see in Mara how many number of records are there. If I click on the number of records, so you have 22,088 records. If I want to know how many records are there created by the user Dilip, so created by the user Dilip is 68 records. How many records are created by the user Dilip and material type finished good, FERT? You've got 23 records. So there are 23 records of created by Dilip and which material type FPRT. Now, if I execute button, then system gives me what all those records are. So these are all these different reports which is created by the user. If I want to download this information, you can also download this information you see that export from here if you go to export if you want to export this into let us say local file in this spreadsheet you want to store that spreadsheet in the desktop and let us say you give a name to this file something so let's say you give a name uh, abcd I'll find the place. And uh, generate. So yes. So data has been transferred. Now that transferred, I've done Excel sheet. So if I go to my drive, I stored that in my D drive. So this is ABCD Excel sheet. If I click on this ABC or Excel sheet, now this data has been downloaded to Excel sheet. These are the records which you have downloaded. These are the 23 records which you have created. So that way you can download the data in 
uh, from the SAP to legacy system. These are the some of the summary formats for the data migration and all that is concerned. Do you have any question? Okay, good. Okay, so good. Um, thank you.